Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you with my entire fragrance collection video. And I'm gonna try to do this video all in one go even though I have quite a few fragrances to get through. My fragrance collection has more than doubled over the last few years with COVID, with moving, with becoming a little bit more of a perfume enthusiast, we'll say. I have been watching quite a bit of content here on YouTube and consuming just lots of fragrance content in general since it has been something that I've always enjoyed and have recently started collecting, I guess you would say. So um, my collection's quite large. I'm not gonna say too, too much about each one just because I don't want this video to have to be broken up into parts. And I'm gonna try to go through by um, Fragrance House. I think that's the easiest way to do it. So I'm just going to get started in alphabetical order with Bond number no. 9. I have two fragrances from Bond number no. 9. The first one is Greenwich Village, which is a beautiful kind of fruity floral scent that um, is perfect for spring and summer. And then I also have a Tribeca, which is a lovely kind of deeper gourmand scent that I loved wearing right around the holidays and I continue to enjoy really comforting and delicious. So those are my two Bond number no. nines. Next up is Burberry. I have three from the Burberry Her line. I have the original Burberry Her, which I know often gets compared to Baccarat Rouge 540. I think this is a lot sweeter and more fruity than that, um, but I absolutely love this fragrance. So much so that I have it also in the intense version. I think the intense version a little bit is a little bit more like Baccarat Rouge, it's definitely a little bit deeper um, and not quite so sweet, but love it um, just as much as the original. And then I recently just picked up um, Burberry Her. This is the Eau de Toilette, which smells nothing like the other two. This one has a really fresh sort of pear note in it and is just kind of perfect for the summertime here, especially in the heat in Florida. The next fragrance house on my list is Byredo, and I have four from Byredo. The first one is Mojave Ghost. This is a beautiful um, woody floral fragrance that I love to wear in the spring and summertime. I also have Gypsy Water. This was the first fragrance I picked up from the house, and I love this. This is another woody sort of floral scent that I think is perfect for all year round use. I also have Bal de Freak, which is a recent purchase. This one is a little bit more sort of tropical. I get a tropical vibe from this, and it's something that I definitely will get a lot of use out of coming into the summer season here in Florida. And then my last fragrance that I picked up on the secondhand market and I am not in love with is actually Black Saffron, which I know a lot of people love this one. This is a leathery raspberry scent that um, is a little heavy in my opinion on the leather and I am just not in love with it so I will probably end up selling um, this along with quite a few other fragrances. I have been selling things by the way on my Poshmark account at have Louie, all one word, in case anyone is interested in purchasing anything that I am selling. Next up, I have the House of Chanel, which I have probably more fragrances from than any other brand I'm gonna go through. Um, so I'm gonna try to go through these quickly. The first one I have is Chanel number no. 19 Poudre, and this one smells like a powdery version of Chanel number no. 19, which is a beautiful kind of green iris scent. I love this one. I have Coco Chanel or Coco, sorry, Coco Noir, which is an evening version, I would say, of Coco. This one is a beautiful, woody, deep, sensual fragrance that I love to wear in the evenings. Next one is Coco the Original. This one is a beautiful, warm, spicy scent. Um, definitely, I pick up on the clove in this and it's just a delicious fragrance for fall and winter and in the evenings. And my last from the Coco line is Coco Mademoiselle. This is the intense version and I love this version as compared to the original because I definitely can pick up on some more vanilla and some warmer sort of, it's like a warmer, more approachable, I would say, version of the original and I love this. And this is one of the many perfumes I should have mentioned that I recently rediscovered in my box of missing fragrances that um, I found after long, long after we moved into this apartment. So um, I was very happy to have it back in my life. Next up, I have my Chanel number no. fives. I have the Eau de Parfum, which is, uh, really needs no introduction. This is one that I wore on my wedding day and will forever hold a special place in my heart. 
I have Low, which is the most recent flanker of Chanel Number no. 5. This one is a lighter, fresher, more citrusy version. And then my favorite of the three has to be um, the Eau Premier version, which came out, I believe, around 2008 and um, has been in my heart ever since. This is a fragrance that I have loved wearing um, for many years. It was my signature scent for many years, and I wore nothing but this, and I just absolutely love it. It's sort of a, I would say, sweeter, warmer version of Chanel Number no. 5. Next up, I have Chanel Number no. 1. Uh, this is the Number no. 1 Low Rouge, which is one of the newest fragrances released from Chanel. This is a fragrance mist that was part of this line released earlier this month and I absolutely love it. It just is a very, very light mist of fragrance that smells kind of like Chanel makeup and skincare products. I have my beloved Cristal Overt, which is um, a recent purchase. I purchased this off the secondhand market um, and was so happy to find it in this smaller size since I had finally used up my large bottle that I've had for many years. This is a beautiful, fresh, citrusy, sparkling floral. I have Chanel Allure. This is the um, vanilla and um, floral fragrance that I wore so many years um, ago when I was probably in my 20s and I recently repurchased. Definitely a nostalgic purchase and I absolutely love it. I have Paris Venise, which is a beautiful, um, again, sort of citrusy, floral with um, a little bit of powderiness is perfect for any time of day, any occasion really. And then finally from the Lay Exclusif line, I have Gardenia, which was my runner-up wedding day fragrance that I ended up taking with me on our honeymoon to Jamaica and it will forever make me think of that trip. Um, and I have Chanel Beige, which is a beautiful kind of creamy uh, white floral, definitely has some notes of honey and is very sweet and warming and delicious. Next up is Dolce & Gabbana and I have two fragrances. I have the Only One, which is a fragrance that often gets compared to YSL's Black Opium because of the kind of coffee note in here. I don't get as much of a coffee note in this as I do with Black Opium. I don't really love that fragrance for that reason. I don't love coffee and fragrances, but I do actually prefer this fragrance. I think it's a sweet, delicious, kind of warm floral that I will continue to wear for year-round use. And then I have the Only One Intense, which is completely nothing like the original. This is um, a, again, white floral with a touch of coconut, and I um, picked this up in the fall and have loved it through the fall and winter, but I could definitely see wearing this in the evenings in the summertime as well because of that coconut scent. Next up, I have two fragrances from the House of Diptyque. I have Eau Duel, the Eau de Toilette. This is a beautiful kind of green vanilla scent um, that is a little bit powdery and stays very close to the skin. And I have Tam Dao, which is a beautiful sandalwood scent. And I love to actually layer these two. Um, sandalwood and vanilla are kind of two of my favorite fragrances in uh, or fragrance notes in perfumes. And so these two pair lovely together. Moving on to the House of Dior, I have Dior Addict, which is another rediscovery from my box of missing fragrances. This is a beautiful, uh, warm vanilla, very sensual vanilla scent that I'm so happy to have back in my collection. I have three from the um, Privé line, the uh, Christian Dior Privé line. I have Vanilla Diorama, which is a beautiful kind of powdery vanilla fragrance. I have Amber Nui, which is a beautiful kind of powdery amber fragrance. And then I have Feb Delicious, which is a beautiful, this one's hard to describe, but it's a gourmand scent. It's also powdery. And I think all three kind of remind me of each other, but this one is definitely my favorite of the three. And my last four fragrances from Dior are all from the Poison line. Um, I have the original Poison, which was another nostalgic purchase that takes me right back to my early 20s kind of clubbing days. I have Pure Poison, which is a beautiful white floral. I get a lot of jasmine from this one. I think it's kind of a great combination of sensual and kind of fresh at the same time and is beautiful for all year round use. I have Hypnotic Poison, which is an absolutely delicious almond vanilla fragrance that I love wearing around the holidays. And then I have Poison Girl. This was one that was in my box of missing fragrances. And um, so I had actually picked this up in the Eau de Toilette um, at Sephora and ended up selling that one when I found this one, but I absolutely love this fragrance. 
Next up, I have two fragrances from Guerlain. I have Mon Guerlain, which is, of course, a fan favorite. Um, I had to pick up this fragrance after consuming so much um, fragrance content and everyone raving about how beautiful this was. This is a lavender vanilla scent that I absolutely love as well. And I just recently purchased off the secondhand market the Intense version, which um, to me, uh, it smells very similar, but you definitely get a stronger vanilla in the dry down on this, and it's absolutely lovely. I have two fragrances from Jimmy Choo. The first one is Jimmy Choo the Original, which is a lovely kind of warm, sweet patchouli floral that I love to wear in the fall and winter. And then I also recently picked up, um, I think this is called Fever, Jimmy Choo Fever. This one is nothing like the original. <laughs> It's more of kind of a sweeter um, scent that I am not absolutely in love with, and this one may be parting ways with me soon. Next up, I've got a bunch of Jo Malone fragrances. Um, I recently refound a lot of these in my box of missing fra fragrances and had already repurchased, so I ended up selling a few um, on my Poshmark account. I have Mimosa and Cardamom, which is a beautiful kind of uh, sweet floral scent that I love to wear year-round. I have Orange Blossom, which is one that I prefer to layer with a lot of fragrances that I'll get into shortly. I have Blackberry and Bay. This is one that I love to layer, like I said, with Orange Blossom. I find Orange Blossom just a little too sweet, but when you combine it with something tart like this, it is just absolutely stunning. I have Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This is one that did not disappear and I had it with me when we first moved to Florida and I made quite a big dent in it because it was one of the only sort of fresh scents I had when we came here. I have English Pear and Freesia, which is a beautiful, beautiful kind of powdery um, pear scent, powdery and sparkly at the same time. I love to combine this with a lot of different fragrances from Jo Malone. Um, this is one of my favorites. I have Wood Sage and Sea Salt, which is for me the ultimate layering fragrance. This can kind of tone down any other fragrance in my collection, or you can just wear it on its own for a lovely fresh Wood Sage and Sea Salt. I have Velvet Rose and Oud, which um, I will probably be selling soon. I have not made much of a dent in this at all, and I do have another Rose and Oud fragrance in my collection that I like just a little more, so um, this one will probably be on the chopping block. I have Dark Amber and Ginger Lily, which I've made quite a dent on this one. This has been, this is my second bottle and this has been a favorite for many years. I like to layer this with a lot of other fragrances, including English Pear and Freesia, and it's just a beautiful, delicious amber fragrance. I have Tuberose Angelica, which is another fragrance I love to pair with English Pear and Freesia. This is a beautiful, sweet tuberose scent. And last but not least, my most recent addition to my Jo Malone collection is Myrrh and Tonka, which is a lovely Myrrh and Tonka fragrance that is just a little bit powdery and something I definitely love to wear in the fall and winter. Next up is the House of Kaali. I recently discovered Kaali and have fallen very hard and started collecting many fragrances from the house. I have um, Musk. This is Musk. 12, I believe. Um, this is a beautiful, sweet vanilla musk that is really comforting and delightful to just wear around the house or layer with other fragrances. And I also really like to wear this one at bedtime. I have Eden Juicy Apple, which is their latest release. This is one that is just a fresh, delicious, juicy apple and berry fragrance that dries down to a warm vanilla scent. And I absolutely love it. My newest Kayali is Utopia Vanilla Cocoa, which I think I will get it, be getting a lot of use out of this summer. This is a beautiful vanilla coconut fragrance that just smells like summertime in a bottle. I have the infamous Vanilla 28, which is a beautiful warm brown sugar vanilla that I love to wear on its own or paired with a lot of other fragrances. I actually really like to pair this with my Chanel No. 5s to really amp up the vanilla in those fragrances. My favorite from Kayali has to be Deja Vu White Flower. This is a beautiful, warm vanilla white flower scent that is sensual and something I could definitely see myself wearing year round. And I have Kayali Invite Only, which is a very sort of sexy gourmand fragrance that has obviously a lot of amber mixed with cherry and I believe um, 
I believe there might be oud in this, I'm not positive, but it's definitely a um, heavy hitter of all of my Kayali fragrances and one that I love wearing during the fall and winter. I have one more body mist to include in this, which is Love's Baby Soft. This was another fragrance that had gone missing and I rediscovered and just was a nostalgic purchase, reminds me of my youth, and um, I definitely love wearing this one just around the house. It's very comforting and to bed as well. Next up, I have six fragrances from the House of Maison Francis Kirkjohn. I have become a huge fan of um, this house and I cannot wait to see what he does at Dior. So the first fragrance I have is Baccarat Rouge 540. This is the one that started it all and I'm finally nearing the end of this bottle and have one on backup. This is a beautiful sort of floral amber scent with a lot of sweetness, sugary sweetness that I absolutely love. I recently picked up the x version, which is an even more sort of pure version with a little bit of bitter almond that really brings out the sweetness in this fragrance. I have Oud Satin Mood, which is the Oud Rose fragrance that um, has taken over my life. I just absolutely love this. It's also got some vanilla and it is just a perfectly blended oud fragrance that um, I definitely will be reserving for the evenings. I have Grand Soir, which is a absolutely stunning amber fragrance with a little hint of vanilla. This dries down to some powdery goodness that I absolutely cannot get enough of. I have Gentle Fluid Fluidity Gold, which has recently stolen my heart. This has, is a beautiful vanilla fragrance with some hints of um, like freshness to it at the same time. It's a really unique fragrance and something I have um, been wearing quite a bit in the fall and winter. And my most recent addition to my um, MFK collection is A La Rose, which is a beautiful, stunning, very realistic rose fragrance that is fresh and beautiful, perfect for the springtime. Next up, I have five fragrances from Narciso Rodriguez. I absolutely love musky fragrances and was so happy to rediscover these two in my box of missing fragrances. I have Narciso, which is the woody musk fragrance that stole my heart and um, it's got a little gardenia, a little bit of sweetness, but overall it's just a really powdery, delicious, musky, woody fragrance. And I also have Narciso Poudre, which is a more even more powdery version with a little more uh, sweetness. This is one that is very comforting and I love to wear around the house. And then from the Narciso Rodriguez for her line, I have the for her out of toilette. Um, I recently sold my Eau de Parfum since I much prefer this version. I think the Eau de Parfum has a little bit more rose added into it and I'm not a huge fan of rose sometimes, depends on the fragrance, but um, this one is just delightful. It's a beautiful white floral musk scent. I have the pure musk version of Narciso Rodriguez for her. This one um, is really just a musky sweet fragrance that um, really doesn't have any florals in it. It's sort of like Narciso Rodriguez for her minus the florals. And then I have Narciso Rodriguez for her. This is Musk Noir, which is nothing like any of the others. This one is um, more of sort of a sweet suede scent, I would say. Definitely some white florals in here as well, but mostly I get suede musk and um, this one stays very close to my skin. I love wearing it at bedtime and just around the house. Very comforting fragrance. Next up, I have five fragrances from the House of Parfums de Marly. This is another brand that stole my heart in 2021. Um, and the one that started it all was Delina. This is a fragrance like no other in my collection, like ever. This is a kind of, it opens very tart with some rhubarb and lychee. Um, then it goes into being more of a rose scent, but a sweet rose with um, a dry down of vanilla and is just absolutely so well blended and so intoxicating. I love this fragrance for year-round use. And I love it so much so that I had to pick up the exclusive version, which is a lot more powdery and uh, they definitely have amped up the vanilla in this one. I love wearing this one more in the evenings and in cold weather. My next favorite from Parfums de Marly has to be Athalia, which is a beautiful powdery iris vanilla fragrance that is just so inviting and delicious. I just want to snuggle up with this one. Next up, I have the newest from the line. This is Oriana and this is a beautiful sweet orange blossom with some whipped cream and 
just um, almost like a bubblegum sweetness, but absolutely gorgeous. And finally, my most recent addition is Meliora. This is a really beautiful berry fragrance that um, is very fresh, greenness, berries. You get kind of like the whole, the stems, the leaves, everything with the berries in this. Something I think will be super fresh and beautiful for spring and summer here in Florida. Next up, I have two fragrances from Philosophy. I have Fresh Cream and I have Fresh Cream Warm Cashmere. This is just kind of a warmer version of the sweet creaminess of Fresh Cream. These are beautiful scents that I like to wear when I get out of the shower and I just want something light and comforting. Next up, I have two fragrances from Prada. The first one is Infusion the Iris, which is my beloved fragrance that had gone missing and I'm so happy to have it back in my life. This is a beautiful, powdery iris scent that I love to wear. Um, I used to love to wear it to the office and lately I've been just wearing it around the house and to bed and I absolutely love it. And I love it so much so that I recently picked up um, the um, Amand version, which is um, an almond, irisy, powdery, really comforting fragrance that I also love to wear around the house and to bed. So I may have lied when I said I had more fragrances from Chanel than any other house. It may actually be Tom Ford. So I'm going to go through these quickly. I have Tom Ford Metalique, which is a beautiful kind of cool metallic vanilla scent. Absolutely stunning. I have um, Black Orchid as well as um, Orchid Soleil. The Black Orchid, I don't really think needs an introduction. People either love or hate this. It's a beautiful, spicy, um, kind of warm fragrance, very sexy. Um, I also have Orchid Soleil, which is kind of like the cross between, I always think this is like a cross between Black Orchid and Soleil Blanc. So this is more of a um, coconutty kind of tropical version of Black Orchid. I have White Suede, which is a beautiful suede fragrance that I love to wear year round. I have Santal Blush, which um, was a recent repurchase. And this is a beautiful sandalwood fragrance. I have become a huge fan of sandalwood. This one has some oud in it as well. So it makes it really sensual and beautiful. And you just want to snuggle up close to this one. I have Soleil Blanc, which is a beautiful vacation in a bottle. Nice coconutty um, floral that I love to wear in the spring and summertime. I have Lost Cherry, which is a beautiful, boozy, delicious cherry fragrance. I have Jasmine Rouge, which is a beautiful, sweet jasmine fragrance. I have Fucking Fabulous, which to me is Tom Ford in a bottle. It's a cross, It's sort of a toss up between Black Orchid and Fucking Fabulous. This one is just absolutely stunning. I have Soleil Depositano, which is a warm, um, delicious kind of fresh scent that I love to wear in the summertime. I have Neroli Portofino, which is a beautiful, sweet, fresh Neroli scent. Also, I love to wear this in the spring and summertime. And my last Tom Ford fragrance needs no introduction. It is Tobacco Vanille, and this one is one of the ones that started it all for me. It is just so intoxicating and beautiful. I have one fragrance from Victor and Rolf, and that is Flower Bomb. Um, this is another one that I recently rediscovered in my box of missing fragrances, and it is a warm, sweet, sensual floral that I love to wear year round. Um, and this is one that I ended up repurchasing in a little tiny size that I'll probably use for travel or give away at some point, but I'm so happy to have this bottle back in my collection. I have one fragrance from Valentino and that is Donna Born in Roma. This is a beautiful, warm, again, a lot of my references to my fragrances seem to revolve around warm, um, woody or warm florals. Um, this one is definitely a warm floral with a hint of sweetness, but um, definitely something that I enjoy wearing more, I think, in the fall and winter. And my last fragrance house on the list is YSL, and I have two fragrances, both from the Libra line. I have the original Libra, which is a absolutely intoxicating um, kind of a lavender vanilla fragrance that I think is perfect for everyday use. Um, definitely one that if I were working in an office, I would definitely consider wearing to the office. And then I have Libra Intense, which is um, like Libra, but with a little bit amped up um, vanilla. This one is absolutely stunning for evening use and one that I love to wear also around the house. I find it very comforting. So those are all of my fragrances in my collection at this time. I am looking forward to 
selling a few of these, um, getting my collection a little bit more curated. I know it's a little bit out of control right now, but like I said, I have just really found comfort in fragrance over these last few years for whatever reason. And I've also been um, starting to purchase more from the sort of secondhand market, which I think is a great way to discover new fragrances or to find old loves um, that I have brought back into my collection. And I will be selling more fragrances on my Poshmark account at Have Louis, all one word. So if you're interested in anything, please check me out there. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye.